Hello, my name is Evan Dellen, and on behalf of my co-authors, I'd like to discuss our paper, Clinical, Endoscopic, and Histologic Findings Distinguish Eosinophilic Esophagitis from Gastroesophageal Reflux Disease. Features of eosinophilic esophagitis, which I'll abbreviate EOE, and gastroesophageal reflux disease, or GERD, can overlap, and distinguishing them can be challenging on a clinical basis. Making the differentiation, though, can be crucial because the evaluation and treatment of the two conditions is quite divergent. The aims of our study were to characterize the clinical, endoscopic, and histologic features in a large number of patients with EOE, compare them to GERD patients, and determine factors that could reliably distinguish the two conditions. To that end, we conducted a retrospective case control study at the University of North Carolina Hospitals. We selected patients from the UNC EOE Clinical Pathologic Database. Cases were any patient with eosinophilic esophagitis of any age as defined by recent consensus guidelines. Specifically, patients had to have greater or equal to 15 eosinophils per high power field in at least one high power field, had to have symptoms of esophageal dysfunction such as dysphagia, food impaction, heartburn, or feeding intolerance, and have other causes of esophageal eosinophilia excluded, and not have a response to acid suppression. Controls were also patients of any age, but they had GERD and underwent an upper endoscopy with biopsy over the same study time frame. GERD patients were defined as having at least one typical symptom of GERD, such as heartburn or regurgitation, which was the main indication for their upper endoscopy. They also had to have consistent biopsy findings, such as inflammation, and a clinical evaluation which excluded other causes. We extracted clinical and endoscopic data from the electronic medical records at UNC. For the histologic analysis, we re-examined all of the pathology slides after pulling them from archive status. Uh, the three study pathologists examined each slide using a protocol that we've previously validated to obtain eosinophil counts. They also examined for eosinophil degranulation, eosinophilic microabscesses, and other histologic findings. Cases and controls were compared, and multivariate analysis with unconditional logistic regression was performed to develop a predictive model for the diagnosis of EOE. We then constructed receiver operating characteristic, or ROC, curves, and were able to calculate the area under the curve, or the AUC. We analyzed data from 151 patients with EOE and 226 patients with GERD. We first found that the incidence and frequency of diagnosis of EOE dramatically rose at our center over the eight-year study time frame. This increase in diagnosis far outpaced the increase in volume of upper endoscopy and the increased number of esophageal biopsies that were taken. So we think this is a real increase in the incidence of the disease rather than just increasing recognition of the disease. Next, we discovered multiple differences in the clinical, endoscopic, and histologic features in patients with EOE as compa compared to patients with GERD, and these are outlined in detail in tables one through three. We also found several differences between adult and pediatric patients with EOE, and these are demonstrated in figures two. On multivariate analysis, we found nine key factors that independently predicted EOE. These included a younger age, having symptoms of dysphagia, having a documented food allergy, having esophageal rings, linear furrows, and white plaques or exudates found on upper endoscopy, not having a hiatal hernia on upper endoscopy, having a higher maximum eosinophil count, and having eosinophil degranulation on the biopsy specimen. This model overall had an excellent predictive value, um, sorry, excellent predictive ability when the ROC curve was constructed, with an area under the curve of 0.934. In conclusion, we identified a readily available and routinely measured set of factors which reliably differentiate EOE from GERD. By focusing on this group of factors, we were able to distinguish the two conditions in our cohort. This model, after validation in other populations, may be quite useful to help improve the diagnosis of EOE and potentially facilitate earlier institution of treatment in patients with this condition. Thank you very much.